Good morning, all. Um, thank you for joining the uh, thank you for joining the webinar. Uh, really nice to uh, uh, to see so many people that have uh, that have joined. Uh, very good of you. Um, we'll move the slides on. Hopefully, you guys can see the presentation on screen. Um, uh, I thought I'd uh, uh, introduce myself and Kimmel in a, in a moment in terms of who and what uh, uh, who and what we are. Uh, my name's John, John Craven. I am uh, from B Cloud Solutions. We are a, a, an omni-channel contact center platform uh, and, and solution provider. We work with customers uh, throughout UK, Europe, uh, and the globe. A um, little bit of my history uh, is the fact that uh, I have worked within the data center communications and contact center world uh, for over 20 years now. Uh, it feels like a lot longer. Um, but uh, uh, work with customers of, of huge different sizes from five users to, to 5,000 uh, users on our platform and, and help them get the most out of uh, contact center solutions uh, and AI. Uh, but that's me. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll let Kim introduce himself. Thanks, John. Um, so I'm Kim Johaus, Senior Sales Manager at InfoBip. Um, so InfoBip are a global leader in terms of communications platform as a service. So we enable pretty much any messaging channel to uh, communicate with your customers or clients themselves. Um, and that can be leveraged through our APIs, um, our platform on, um, online with drag and drop tooling, um, or triggering through automations and third party systems that you may be utilizing. Um, and we're a strategic partner with um, B Cloud themselves, so um, we natively integrate into their own platform. So bringing together best of breed for the two systems together. And similar to John, 20 years in the game. So yes, we're, we're, we're both getting long in the tooth, <laughs> very much so. Um, so uh, uh, I'm not going to rattle through each of the bullet points here. Uh, but here's some of the topics that we're going to touch base on today. But the overarching uh, mindset and, and thought that we wanted to talk about is uh, uh, AI strategies within the contact center world here, where to harness, where not to, why, why not. Um, and then Kim's uh, uh, produced some examples uh, for us to have a look at uh, in a moment as well. Um, one of the overarching thoughts, though, coming into the uh, coming into the webinar this afternoon is the middle statistics on screen here for me the organizations looking at research by the way but organizations that haven't yet adopted uh, conversational ai capabilities or, or, or ai within their contact center world 11 percent of those that haven't done so yet uh, plan to do so within the next year 63% are planning to within the next two years, and then the other 27% uh, more than two years from now. And those that are quick at maths <laughs> will notice that's 101%, so maybe a little bit of rounding of numbers there. But the main thought here is, is that AI and how it's used in the contact center is a huge driver at the moment. Um, myself and, and, and Kim, uh, as our platforms, we're being asked about this all of the time by our customers and potential customers and their pros and cons and, and should they or shouldn't they. Um, the thing that I think we should all think about in the back of our minds, though, is our colleagues within our own businesses. Uh, one of the uh, one of the thoughts here is that 52 percent of adults in the workplace are concerned that AI will replace their jobs. This is a big topic point and an area of concern. So we have to be careful of how we look at this and, and how maybe we bring that into the business. However, the B Cloud and InfoBit platforms are designed specifically to work hand in hand with your employees and your agents within the business. So really important to go through. Um, Kim, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on, on this slide as well here, but one of the things that we've seen of, of how current customer experience and contact centers have already leveraged AI or automation within their uh, their stacks is that 49% of those that have leveraged it uh, have, have done so within the live chat environment, the web chat, web bot, uh, comms area, web, web comms uh, within their businesses. However, we're finding very, very quickly the areas that are catching up with this is phone support. So in other words, voice and phone and, and, and WhatsApp and SMS is very, very quickly catching up with live chat as a proportion of usage. Kim, would would you agree with that? Disagree? What, what do you think? 
Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I mean, live chat, um, in theory, if you think about it, has been um, rising over the years. Um, there's been many different sort of chatbot scenarios. There's been sort of elements of uh, is is a chatbot good enough to service a customer inquiries? And when it was sort of um, not understanding user intents, um, it was a problem. But then NLP engines came in to using natural language processing. That's really helped sort of um, bots basically understand what the user's actually asking and um, basically leverage that. What we're seeing is actually um, there is a shift now to um, chat channels such as WhatsApp, et cetera, where um, bots are actually being leveraged more, furthermore as well because the rise of Gen AI is really sort of helping push that forward because it's actually interpreting what the user is asking in a quick and easy way to, to digest and sort of respond back in a, a, a personable way that that user would expect as well. And, uh... And, and it's interesting the fact that, as you can tell, Kim and I are very much in, in the communications world and we're using things like NLP, Gen AI it's in, in terms of acronyms. The overarching piece here, though, is artificial intelligence, using platforms to help service your teams, your customers, your suppliers uh, with communications rather than your agents directly having to do that at the start of communication. Um, Thought we'd have a quick look at why businesses uh, have have leveraged AI so far, and what the kind of that top-down approach has been of of why boardrooms are demanding that this is something that's looked at. Uh, and I think these sit within two camps at the moment. The first is that you get the the message on high that the business is looking to in, improve the relationship that they have with customers and to reduce things like response time in the business. So very much 64% of customer uh, businesses that use AI say that they're doing it to improve the relationship that they have with customers and 53% have said that they're using that to reduce response times uh, to their customers. But actually the other side of the coin and let's be frank a lot of customers uh, sorry a lot of ai users businesses are using this as a way to reduce costs so save costs is 59 percent increased productivity of their teams is 64 percent then the, the the elephant in the room is to increase uh, in, increase sales so very much business as a whole are seeing this as those two sides of coins with one of those very much being cost benefits to their business um, but I think we shouldn't just look at this as businesses, what the businesses think and what the businesses want. I think we should look at this as what customers want, what the public want. Uh, uh, and Kim, I'll check your opinion at the moment. But the responses that we've had uh, in terms of the research is the reasons why the public like to use things like web chat, web uh, 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 web bots, WhatsApp, SMS, uh, and AI based solutions is that they're looking for assistance to their issues, problems, questions around the clock. They don't want to sit within a nine to five or eight to eight contact center world. They may be out in an evening, have an issue with something uh, and want to contact your business. So 64% of the public that use these platforms, you do so because they want uh, assistance at, at any time. And then there's the millennial mindset. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting old. I've now got teenage kids and, and one that's uh, now just passed his driving test. And they very much believe that if they've given a company their business, uh, they expect if they have a question to get an instant response back. It's that very much sort of um, uh, consumerist sort of uh, mindset of I want instant response because it's available. And so 55 percent of people that use these solutions do so because they expect an answer back immediately. Kim, would you agree? Do, you, do, do your customers say the same? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, actually, I've got a great example um, later in this um, webinar just to talk around the round the clock um, sort of support and assistance um, that you can provide your businesses. Um, the instant response, hundred percent agree with you around um, when you're looking at demographics. Um, you know, we've got to look at actually what category people fall into. Um, and we've got the new rise of Generation Alpha as well, which is sort of the uh, the young up and coming shopper and um, sort of person who's going to consume business services. So um, actually understanding what is their preference, how do they want to communicate? Businesses have got to ready themselves to be able to do that because otherwise, um, you know, individuals will naturally sort of warm towards 
businesses that are supporting those mechanisms that they want to communicate on. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I can never remember which generation I sit in, Kim. I, th I think I'm in the baby boomer generation rather than generation Z or X or X. I don't have a clue, but I think your point's absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, you, you're definitely not Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to claim it. I'm having it. <laughs> um, the area, uh, the, the two other areas on the left that I didn't touch on before that I think are quite important. Um, uh, I think comes into that sort of ability to communicate for your business to communicate with people that maybe have special needs or requirements or that modern side uh, aspect of servicing all of your clients. So maybe your customers that prefer not to speak on the phone, they prefer to have more of electronic communication with your business. 31% of respondents said that that's actually them. So they prefer not to speak to someone. Uh, and speak to a bot or, or, or platform and then actually there's those that are maybe in a position where they cannot speak they may be at work and prefer a chat bot sit in the corner to be able to resolve issues whilst they're at the workplace so um, that's what we find that comes back from the public however again remember we spoke about this uh, blended approach and making sure you can service all of your customers and thinking of that AI strategy for your business, you need to make sure that any customer looking to communicate with your business can do so on the basis that they want to. So whilst AI is an important element to your business maybe moving forward in the communications channels, um, live assistance is still very, very important. We found that within the research that we found is over 50% of people that use a web bot, web chat, or, or electronic platform still found they needed to speak to a customer service agent. And that's important that, for instance, the B Cloud platform delivers AI within the initial touch points and will self serve as where possible. However, at any point, communication can bounce to a live human so that they can deliver any elements of customer support or service that have been missed by, uh, missed by the platform. And the biggest reason at the top as to why people bounce to a human is the fact that the web chat, the AI, didn't resolve the issue immediately. Maybe gave some information, uh, 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 helped self-serve some of that platform, but actually they still wanted to speak to someone. And Just to add to that, John, as well, um, sentiment analysis is really key here as well, um, understanding actually how your client's feeling. If you can measure that, actually, that's a natural sort of um, push to an agent anyway, because um, you want to show that you're supporting sort of someone who's more vulnerable overall as well. So understanding actually how that individual's feeling, you can pretty much make sure they're getting best of breed in terms of being serviced overall correctly. Uh, absolutely right. And the statistics on screen uh, back that point up perfectly. Kim, you're absolutely right. So uh, uh, looking at our customers uh, and their CSAT scores, um, where maybe they don't use an AI solution yet or, or, or automation within their business, um, they had a, a score of 73.3. However, when put in place, uh, an AI automated assistance uh, in their flow helps drive that CSAT score to 85%, exactly as Kim said, you're able to understand the sentiment of why people are getting in touch. You have more information in front of you so that where uh, the team does need to communicate with that person, they can see the history, everything in front of them on screen so they can assist. And the next step I think is really, really valuable to know is that the amount of time that your agents are able to deal with customers inquiries concerns problems is about 65 percent of their time when ai isn't adopted maybe some of their time is spent on the administration afterwards or completing uh, uh, further actions or follow-up actions within their business however when ai and automation is used as part of your communications flow that the amount of time that your agents are able to deal directly with customers increases by 15 percent up to 80. Um, so AI can take some of that, I was going to say mundane, but that simple workload still with that natural conversational lead can deliver some of that important information to customers to self-serve and those that need help uh, and more direct help and speak to one of your experts that your team can then focus on those. So it really helps drive the, the level of 
uh, assistance that they're giving. Which comes on to the four things to consider. Here's that big strategy point, right? The four things to consider when looking at AI for your business. One of the questions that we're often asked is which business functions should be migrated first? Uh, and every company is unique here. But those points of who, what, where, why, when are really important to touch on here. So maybe if this is your first touch into AI and automated communications, the some of those more simple tasks or self-servicing tasks might be able to, to be migrated first and then the more complicated after. Um, but the likes of B Cloud and InfoBip happy to talk to you about your 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 teams your functions and maybe which are those easiest to go for first the next point of which which of your what will your reaction be within your business this is really important if you don't have adoption of your platforms within your business if your teams don't agree and see the benefits of what you're doing they won't adopt them and at that point there's big issues so one of the things to do here is to help educate uh, and carry your team with you to show how uh, an AI or communication stack, the likes of Cloud and Infobip, can add to their day to help them, for them to achieve more, to be more successful, and to be more productive. Integration, as, as you'll see from the slides in the moment, everything that Cloud and Infobip does is integrated into your existing systems. So understanding your customers, the platform understanding your customers and how best to serve them will help you get the most out, uh, out of AI. Final point on screen, which providers to engage with? Um, I'm not going to <laughs> advertise other people's platforms. However, engaging with organizations that understand your business, your sector, uh, your, your users and the, your locations is really, really important. And that's why B Cloud partnered with InfoBip and vice versa, is that we're global organizations that have people within location so that we understand what you're looking to achieve and what your customers are looking to achieve. Um, if you agree with that, Kim, would you would you add anything to, to those points? No, no, 100 percent. I think you, you, you pretty much nailed it with the, the, the points that you've covered there. It, it is um, pretty much sort of um, consideration. And um, I guess one of the key areas is, um, you know, what's going to make the most impact? How are you going to build the trust with those individuals and where's the biggest pain? You know, once you sort of understand that, you can pretty much start building out a strategy. And, you know, it's the stepping stones of how do you implement it? And that's where we come in we can sort of give you that guidance and sort of support to to make sure you're building out based on what the market should be you're seeing and how it should be approached overall. Perfect. Thanks, Kim. Um, so talking about that, uh, uh, of how it's delivered, um, this isn't just an advert for, for BCloud, but where we believe you get the most data out of AI um, is where the intelligence can hook into what it what it is that you do, and the learning engines can understand how you like to liaise with your with your customers. So we have a single platform that enables you to work from anywhere. It's integrated into your systems, into your knowledge bases, which will enable uh, enable a faster, simplified uh, rollout. Um, as you can see on screen, B Cloud partner with InfoBip deliver AI into all. Of these channels and you can consume what you want from where you want um obviously the main ones that we've been speaking about so far is customer support customer service and that can come in on any level voice so over the phone your sms email and web chat um uh, channels but also whatsapp and we mentioned here whatsapp for business in, in other words you you guys using there and social media on teams the being contact platform integrates with all of those deep into your Salesforce Dynamics CRM platform. So any interactions that happen through AI or your teams are fed back into your CRM, so they're fully reportable, uh, they're fully compliant, and that the business can make more informed decisions on what you do in future. Probably brings us nicely on to maybe some examples uh, uh, of what we do and, and, and how we do it. And maybe that the initial side here is to talk about WhatsApp very very popular channel one that is heavily adopted across all age brackets uh, we find and and has a, a really really good return on investment um so far we've seen that, that, that whatsapp as a platform within the business world has been used about half of the time for marketing 
uh, uh, purposes, uh, but the other half for things like authentication and utility. So driving uh, uh, communication with your customers about things that they're already doing. So password checking, uh, account checking, customer service side. So actually, it's, it's a nice split of the pie. Uh, and this is probably where it's good to bring Kim in here to talk through some examples of how Infobit working with WhatsApp and web chat, rich chat, chat channels can really help drive that element of your communication stack sat within your customer service, your contact center mindset. So Kim, I'll, uh, I'll move the slide on. Feel free to have a chat through. Thanks, John. So um, when we when we talk about AI, um, we 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 need to look at it in terms of what is it, um, how does it work, where where's best to leverage that type of service, and um, I just want to take you through some slides. The slides that we've got are focused around retail as an example because we we've all been through a buying experience, so we want to sort of present that. But it's not limited to that. It's obviously banking. It's um, public services, it's logistics, it's hospitality. It works pretty much anywhere in terms of what value it can bring to a business. But if you think about um, sort of the past, um, when we tried to sort of you know engage with business, it was person to person within an actual physical store. That's that's how bit traditional business used to work. And then today, you know, we've moved on, and you know, we've got websites, we've got e-commerce sites, we've got omni-channel approaches where we've sort of leveraged technology such as live chat to basically take away some of these sort of simple inquiries um, that a business may have. But fast forward, and probably actually some of us have already seen this, is um, conversational is becoming the sort of predominant sort of um, mechanism that businesses are looking at that. And um, why are they looking to do conversational and leverage AI in the mix as well? Is because actually they want to offer their customers the same type of experience that they had when they were physically speaking to a store assistant, but more moving towards a digital assistant. So actually leveraging automation and using sort of new gen AI technology um, as well as sort of like natural language processing, you're able to sort of pretty much converse with the customer in the way that you want to. You can also introduce sort of menu type options in there as well. And then when you layer in sort of um, some of the richer messaging channels, such as WhatsApp, actually you've got options to present um, visual images, videos, product catalogs, connect your e-commerce site. So you're really now building out a mo lot more compelling case. And then, you know, all the information is housed. So uh, actually from a business perspective, the, the contact center would already have, for instance, a knowledge base, right? Where actually information is already stored. So the agent knows how to respond to that type of inquiry. So what we're doing is actually utilizing that data store itself um, and basically presenting that information to have a sort of more um, sort of instant dialogue with actually a bot as, in, as opposed to um, an actual human. But that being said, actually, there needs to be a tangible um, view that, uh, you know, you, you do need to hand over to an agent at a certain point. If you see that actually the sentiment's gone down, if you see the customer's vulnerable, if you see actually the bot's not actually answering the question effectively, and that's where the, the InfoBIP and B Cloud systems come together is that basically we'll be able to transfer that conversation straight over to the agent, present the history so that they're able to basically relate to that customer's inquiry straight away without having to reconfirm any details because the data has been stored to, to be able to have that, that effective communication. That's perfect. Thanks, Kim. And, and uh, as a point here, I think I mentioned it at the start, but by all means, if anyone has any questions about what we've been already gone through or what we're about to come through, go through, feel free to pop those in the chat. Kim and I are happy to uh, answer those uh, uh, answer at the end, but I'll, uh, I'll move the slide on here. Thanks. Um, so, so conversational experiences, you know, they, they, they sit in sort of multiple places. One is around how you basically engage and promote to your clients how you basically collect that sort of information in terms of their viewing history on, on your websites, in terms of the offline data that they've got there as well. So, so having a customer data platform is equally important to be able to build out that customer profile. And then you're able to sort of engage and sort of support that client through their journey itself. Ultimately, we're looking to get them to transact, right? Because we want to basically create that conversion and lighten the burden on actual physical people having to do activity and focus their time on something which is more service critical, something which requires that sort of one-to-one -one dialogue um, in person. So that's why we're sort of seeing the conversational rise because it services a lot more than what it used to. 
just some examples of um, where conversational comes in. So um, we're all used to traditional marketing where actually it's been very much transactional. You'll receive an email, it will present sort of um, a sale, a load of, a set of products that are available. You can click through and it'll take you through to that special landing page, et cetera, uh, where that promotion has been presented. We're used to sort of seeing SMS campaigns. Um, we're seeing the rise of social campaigns, but what we're seeing is actually um, there's a massive opportunity here where individuals want to um, engage with a business um, and actually have that one-to-one -one dialogue. And regardless of what the entry point is, whether it's um, through a QR code that they've seen and they scanned, whether it's for a social ad that they clicked and it's brought them into a one-to-one -one sort of dialogue on WhatsApp, you can pretty much sort of present um, so much more in terms of actually what's available, the product, the descriptions, the actual um, you know specification of those particular products themselves. Um, but you can also marry that up with the profile data of you have of the individual to to really sort of hyper personalize that as well. Um, but ultimately, connecting that with, for instance, your e-commerce platform. Um, you can actually allow that user to transact. I mean, imagine you pick up your phone and you see a product in WhatsApp um, and you simply swipe to pay, you know, Google Pay, Apple Pay, um, you know, you'll pretty much be able to complete that transaction. That's really powerful. And you're going to get basically the best of conversion through basically utilizing that because you've engaged that individual and they've had that dialogue with you, whether it's through the bot or through an agent themselves. Support is really important, though. Um, so, uh, you know, one of one of the big questions is where do, where do we start with conversational? If you service your customers um, in terms of their inquiries and make it so that they can actually reach your business regardless of time of day, and that simple inquiries can be handled quite quickly and effectively. Um, you know, for instance, someone might want to be looking for a product guide, someone mm -hmm. may be looking to report um, a, a defective items, you know, or someone just might generally want to understand their payment options, et cetera. If you can connect the data, you can pretty much service a customer and they can self-service, but you can also then pick up when they actually need that physical support. Once you've built that trust with that customer to proactively market to those customers subsequently becomes a lot easier because you've now basically got their attention. They know that this is a channel they can communicate with you on. They know that actually they can catch you without actually having to physically speak to someone because your services have now expanded beyond obviously the general options that they've had available to them previously. And then sort of finally, conversational commerce, um, you know, I touched on this earlier, it's, it's a massive opportunity in terms of what you can do in terms of where you're going. Um, you know, we, we've been talking about WhatsApp. WhatsApp's becoming a super app. Um, they're, they're basically trying to build an app within an app, uh, meaning actually you don't need to have your own separate apps. You can actually connect all your sort of services into one single place. So this basically means that actually individuals who actually utilize that channel um, and WhatsApp, as we all know, is, is a very prominent channel in, in the way we actually communicate um, with our friends and peers, but businesses are now leveraging that aspect of it as well. So tying together the channel the actual automation and the agent into one central place will allow you to basically really sort of hyper engage that client themselves and sort of ultimately service them as they need to because if you think about actually when you're speaking to a client themselves an inquiry on the phone a client an inquiry sort of in, in a store is one-to-one -one. when we go through automation and we leverage sort of um, chat applications we can handle multiple conversations. So now rather than servicing one, an agent can service four to five different conversations because a user will respond when they're ready to. And that's the key thing, it's at their leisure um, and when they expect to be responded to. And then you can pretty much run the rest in, in a timely fashion from there. This is just a just a really powerful visual. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but the infinity ring really sort of shows the sort of um, point of a, a client coming on board, how you promote your products and services to the point where they view the products, how they've engaged with your business, the opportunity to speak to an agent, complete a purchase service thereafter, and then how you remarket to that individual. It's, it's really important to understand actually the life cycle. And if you can retain that that circle, um, you're pretty much going to be able to get that repeat business as you need to, because that client's got the trust in your business and in your brand in itself. 
And then just to sort of go into a little bit more detail around some of the use cases that we, we have got here, um, you know, this is just a sort of an example of what the customer journey looks like from the point they basically navigate to your site and they're sort of understanding what sort of products and services you offer, how they basically create an inquiry, whether they sign up to your services, you capturing that data set itself to know actually that individual just signed up. We also know that that individual's viewed the following products. Um, we know they're in the following location. So you now basically build out an individual profile of that individual themselves. You also basically in that collection form can sort of almost pick out their channel preferences as well in terms of how they want to be communicated to as opposed to how you want to communicate to them because you've got to now look at how users want to be sort of communicated with and what their preference is. You know, John may want to, you know, communicate on WhatsApp, my preference may be SMS or email, but do you know that as a business? That's really important. You know, where are you seeing the engagement when you actually carry out your communication strategies and can you subsequently update your, your process in that? But then that moves on to sort of consideration and purchase. So presenting the products and then then basically completing an actual purchase in, in that sense. On the next slide, what you'll see is actually that moves on to how you sort of support them, how you sort of remarket to them and um, understand actually that sentiment and customer satisfaction in the overall journey. It's, they're all sort of compelling parts of actually that customer journey. And, you know, this is all, you know, married up with actually automation, the channel preference and agent led sort of communication, because we just need to know at what touch point we need to do and how we join that data up to get that single view overall of the customer. Just on the next slide, there's a couple of examples that we've got here. So Nissan is one of our clients and they actually, um, they had a challenge where actually they had quite a lot of visits to their sites, um, to their services, but it was out of hours. So, um, you know, individuals were unable to sort of reach out and basically engage the business. So we built a sort of chatbot solution and, um, you know, it was quite straightforward. The problem was people needed to understand what their options were out of hours. So we basically put together the, the, the bot itself, leveraged the channel that they preferred. Um, WhatsApp is really, you know, popular in the MENA region as well. So we, we, we opened that up and um, users are now able to engage with Nissan out of hours, understand about products and services. Um, the stats at the bottom sort of really compelling in terms of how powerful that engagement is. But you can see in terms of the actual leads that it generated is 138% increase. That's massive in comparison to what they had before. They were missing these and likely to sort of be lost to competitors who potentially also offer those types of sort of opportunities to engage with their brand already. So it's, it's really sort of strong in that. There is another example as well um, in terms of what this potentially looks like. So Unilever, a brand for Unilever in Latin region, they wanted to sort of look at how can they basically sort of capitalize their marketing promotions in a more effective way. Um, and they basically did sort of like some disruptive sort of poster campaigns um, in the Sao Paulo region. And that pretty much um, had, for instance, a WhatsApp number, it had a QR code and people were able to scan that. And then they were able to sort of have that one-to-one -one dialogue with the brand they were presented with personalized offers um, for engaging through that channel means. Um, but because of the cost of the campaign, it meant they could actually discount it as opposed to having to do the traditional PPC, having to basically have the physical stores. So the, the actual cost impact meant they could reduce the overall selling price um, and actually present the discount. Again, you can see from the stats, you know, six over 6,000 um, engagements within the first 12 hours and almost 300K in, in within seven days. And that, that resulted in sort of 14, you know, top fold sort of sales um, increase overall in, in, the, in the story itself. So it shows actually utilizing it in the right way will allow you to really build out and sort of hyperdrive your business. And I guess meet the demands of the customers today um, as opposed to yesterday, really. I'll pass back Bye. to you, John. I, I think the, the slide that we saw earlier on, Kim, about why businesses do it, uh, what's in it for them kind of uh, kind of slide. Uh, and I think one of them was increased sales. Um, looking at a 14 times higher sales return, uh, I think that's quite compelling. <laughs> I think any yeah. business uh, would, would, would definitely be looking to do, uh, do something similar. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, uh, thank you for that. Kim, uh, I'm going to bring Matea in, uh, my colleague, that's been looking at uh, 
uh, some of the questions that we've had. So, Matera, if you want to pop on, feel free to uh, ask. Whilst we've been concentrating on slides, you've been concentrating on the questions. So, let's see we answer them. <laughs> yes, I actually got two questions from the chat. Uh, one is from Artemis, which asks us, uh, why do you think other business functions would be resistant to migrate to AI? Oof. Which business functions might not be uh, as enamored in moving to AI, which which might be resistant? Um, I think it's the uh, I think it's the teams within within businesses that are most nervous about their roles. So maybe if you have uh, staff members that are solely maybe focused on servicing web chat, maybe there's been no automation before, and as soon as there is a web chat requirement it's their role to uh to uh to facilitate those and, and answer customer questions i think from the work we've done with our customers where we've seen that they, they have specific roles that, that that may be in danger from using this this type of tool we've always always discussed with our customers about retraining and and increasing the scope of the of the delivery that those agents do so rather than saying, right, there's no room for you anymore, so actually these tools here are to assist you, but we'd also like you to do these things as well. So increasing their scope puts their mind at rest that they're not going to lose, uh, not going to lose their role. I don't, I don't know, Kim, if you, if you think the same? Yeah, no, I mean, I've got some additional sort of probably um, live examples because I've, I've had this question um, and a, a lot of it's also to do with the brand reputation. So any change can it actually impact, um, for instance, brand reputation. So um, there is hesitation, but what we do well is we basically build it in incremental phases so that actually there's no impact to the brand and actually it's it's only introduced to sort of segments of customers at a time. So you can really sort of understand actually the behaviors in there and sort of um, tweak it to make it more of an effective approach. So that is one of the biggest sort of drivers in that as well. Um, from a departmental perspective, it needs to be joined up, right? Um, because we're, we've illustrated earlier, you're looking at the full customer journey. It needs to be consistent across there. So when a business is looking at this, you need to get buy-in from all the teams that actually this is the way we're going to approach it. This is the phased approach that we're going to take. We may start with service to start with um, and support. Um, but actually, we're going to start building this out from, to a marketing team, to um, a customer retention team and so forth, because you need to sort of really sort of have it as a joint up approach. It needs to be available to all, but you can stagger that and you can do it in incremental with some A-B testing to make sure it actually meets the metrics that that business is looking at overall. Just a heads up, Artemis, who asked the question, says thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. We'll, We'll, we'll take that that we answered it in enough detail so we'll put a tick in the box thanks artemis <laughs> second question this time from katie who asks we've got some communication channels already active will i be able to implement your solution on the active ones as well uh yes and this is one of the major reasons why uh infobip and bcloud work uh so well together is that bcloud have history of of, of utilizing existing platforms and channels with our in-house API. Um, so we're able to marry up with your existing channels, whichever they are, voice, messaging, uh, all the different flavors, social chats, et cetera. So we can hook into those and harness the power of our platform and info bits together to drive messaging or, 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 or connection through your existing channel. So short answer, absolutely, yes, we can. Um, long answer is, yeah, we're happy to have a chat about what it is that you currently use and, and maybe where we can help. The other thing just to add to that as well is um, one of the big sort of flavors of, of today is platform consolidation. Um, there's basically multiple sort of um, providers and it becomes a real sort of battle in terms of here's my email provider, here's my messaging provider, here's my contact center provider, here's my marketing automation provider. So it becomes really, really disjointed. And to really get a reflective view, you do need to consolidate that. 
So migration wise, yeah, 100 percent, like John mentioned, we can migrate your services to a consolidated view so that all those channels are not disrupted, but they're just basically migrated and you're able to run at the same pace as you were previously, but also then leverage the additional value of some of the enrichment pieces that you're looking at there as well. So, you know, if you have got those types of questions, do reach out. We can happily help you with that. And I, I think one of the uh uh one of the things that i'm really proud of working for b cloud is that our own internal customer uh service customer satisfaction scores of uh why people use b cloud they stay with us uh, our customer support is phenomenal i think we get some of the best scores in the industry of our customers getting the support they need from us so they can concentrate on their business rather than having to concentrate on communication channels they just want to consume a platform now so um the fact that as kim said migrating or mirroring platforms working them side by side something we're happy to do but we often find our customers say right we've done so well on these areas we want to move those over uh, now to a to a, a, a single a, a single shop so happy to discuss either way that, that needs to work and we've got just right now another question related from Albert that says, uh, what do you say about the new startup that has to begin from scratch in the customer assistant? Um, I think, Albert, if, if you're a, a new startup um, that's that, that starting from scratch, there's going to be lots of people on the webinar that are very envious of you, mm -hmm. where they maybe have older platforms that that, that maybe they're, they're married to, that they're finding it difficult to move from, or to enhance those into the modern world. So actually, if you're a new startup, you're in the lucky position of being able to have a look at all of your options. However, I'm a very big believer in not running before you can walk. So we often deal with a lot of customers that maybe have a new brand or a new startup that were able to implement certain levels of uh, channels, communication strategies, and, and, and build those over time, rather than going in whole hog at the start, which you can, but that's a big uh, that's a big bite to uh, a big bite to take. Um, so we often find that our customers um, start on the core platforms first and then build on from there. Kim, I, I don't know if you're uh, you got the same thought. Yeah, just yeah. just to add, Albert, um, my my view is you're in a really good place. Um, you've started a business. You've got the opportunity to actually see what are your competitors doing um, and what are they not doing so well and actually start basically supercharging that type of um, service provision, you can then also start building your targeting campaigns to start strategizing around that set, you know, segmentation of audience that basically prefer that type of um, service provision itself. You know, we're, we've seen massive rises um, in competitors who are actually becoming niche and really winning the hyperdrive in their sort of communication strategy. So there's a massive opportunity for you here. Yeah, and one of the things that, that, that a lot of our new startup uh, customers or, or, or customers that are that are now looking to start to build out their customer support and customer messaging uh, is language. And I'm not here talking about AI language in neuro-linguistic programming and natural languages. Uh, a lot of our customers want to work in multiple locations uh, across Europe. Mina, as, as, as mentioned before, Latin America. Um, our platforms operate in multiple languages. Uh, 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 already. So if that's something to bear in mind, whilst the presentation, the webinar today has has shown predominantly in English, <clears throat> all, uh, the, all, the, all the popular languages across the uh, across the world are already harnessed in our platform. So that shouldn't be something that would uh, that would get in your way. That shouldn't be a hurdle either. Awesome. I was uh, looking at someone writing in the chat, but I didn't see any new messages. So we might wait a few seconds to see if something pops up. Uh, perfect. And I, and I think almost like it was planned, we're about at the 45 minute stage as well. So obviously, if we do uh, do get another uh, uh, question through, uh, happy to answer. But um, obviously, everyone that's that, that's attended and those that haven't managed to make it will will make the uh, the webinar, the recording of the webinar available to all. So if you wanted to, you could watch Kim and I back. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you could watch us back. We'll also provide uh, slides and, and questions, but we will drop an email to you to sort of check if there are any other questions and if you'd like to chat about how we can help your business. Very one. Oh, yes. um, sorry, John, one very, very important. I really want to know how the WhatsApp conversation works. Once the, the conversation started, we can uh, we can keep all the conversation data or it has time window that expires. 
Oh, great, great question. And this is probably where the, um, the what we spoke about earlier on, Matea and, and Evan, um, is integration, where we make sure a record of that communication is kept because that's really important for compliance, right? If, if a customer raises a support query and then you need to look back, you need to go back to that communication in the weeks or months ahead to make sure that any complaint is resolved properly. That's all stored in the platform and system. And as part of our integrations, maybe into your CRM, those uh, uh, those messages are stored against the correct customer, supplier, etc. So um, absolutely, those communications are kept. Kim, if you want to add any more to that. Yeah, no, I mean, WhatsApp itself as a channel, um, communications um, from your perspective that, you know, you can have agreed data retention policies, um, but you can also um, have those flexed as you need to. Um, from a conversation perspective, the way Meta run that um, is the, the session is for 24 hours. Um, so in terms when you're in a conversation, but the actual history of that can be retained on a sort of agreed period that you want to sort of run that for. Um, so you can obviously use that for sort of subsequent sort of communication, but you can append that to a customer data platform or to a client record just so that you've got this sort of clear view of obviously what that subsequent communication should be thereafter based on that last dialogue itself. So um, there's multiple ways, but we're happy to sort of take that conversation question offline and go into a bit more detail just in case we haven't given you that exact clarity that you're looking for as well. We get into that wonderful world of GDPR <laughs> and, and something that we uh, both InfoBip and B Cloud have, have internal experts on. So uh, we'll make sure A, it's compliant, but B, it delivers the, uh, the functionality that you need. Awesome. Other than that, Matea, anything else that was, was raised? I'm seeing someone trying to write something. I don't know if we still have time, maybe a few minutes. Yeah, we'll, we'll pass. But other than that, uh, anyone else that I, I think the uh, invites, uh, oh, uh, I think I've seen a pop up, but I, I, I can't no, read it. Uh, one, one other one, also from Pevin. One more question. Do we have to use multiple phone numbers for multiple branding or with one phone number, we can send multiple brands? Your choice, this Mr. Customer. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, 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 B Cloud and, and, and InfoBip, we, we provide numbers uh, across the world or you may have existing numbers or WhatsApp numbers, et cetera. Uh, so you mentioned, uh, do you have to use multiple numbers or would you prefer a single number for your brand? The choice is yours. You can actually sit in both camps. Uh, and on, on, Meta, on, on Meta's perspective, from a registration point of view, um, it would be basically to set up a, a single number with a, a single brand. So if you did want to run multiple brands, um it, it is in terms possible but obviously if that number is presented on the bio itself when you click through to the more information um then obviously it might change the perspective if someone rings in and it presents the wrong brand so like john's mentioned we can split it out um for your for your benefit and value it doesn't cause um, much interruption or service and those calls can be diverted directly to a single number if need be as well just just but from a customer experience point of view it best to split those out so on that note, thanks, Kim, by the way, uh, on that note, if anyone else does have any other questions, we're happy to answer those in private. Um, uh, again, we'll, we'll share all the uh, the collateral, the, the, the webinar recording, et cetera, following this session. Feel free to follow that up uh, with, with any questions that you have. Obviously, we'll reach out to, to check that we've done our job properly uh, and that we've helped this morning. But other than that, thank you so much for giving us 45, 50 minutes of your time. Uh, it's been great to... Uh, discuss more with you uh, on the topic of AI within the, the customer service side and the strategies involved. So uh, I'd uh, uh, like to thank you for your attendance. Thank you. So thank much. you, everyone. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.